How are you? Morning, Stephen. Morning, Joe. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. So this is uh, a bit special, uh, different video that you, you usually do. Ah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great to, uh, today. Uh, yeah, we're fortunate to have you uh, interview uh, by us, and uh, yeah, we really want to get to know a little bit more about yourself. Uh, I mean, how you get start for driving, uh, why you start filming, uh, and then I have some tough question. I think I got a list of questions. Probably how many of them? Sixty questions that you got. Oh, <laughs> okay, I bet. I bet most of them. What wins you gonna buy? Sixty-two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it's uh, certainly, yeah, uh, a lot of questions will be quite interesting at the end of the interview. Uh, yeah. yeah, so how are you doing last uh, two weeks uh, during lockdown? Are you... Uh, it's, been, it's, been, it's been crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly high-functioning person where I've always got something to do. You obviously, um, also got, got, got a little one to, uh, to contend with as well now, so I've always got something to do. He's very, he's very, um, very noisy, very almost very good for asleep about now. But um, obviously we, we run our run our own business as well, and we're always doing doing something. So for me to be at home with, with nothing to do is um is unique. That's that's for sure. So it's definitely been um, some some challenges, just, just a little bit mental. So I'm, I'm always doing something. So for me to do nothing is, is is it has been tough. That's why the content sort of picked up a little bit as well on, on the YouTube stuff. Um, which is good, good and bad. Um, obviously, I get to spend a whole lot more time with, with Mr. Tobes as well, which is fantastic. I'm, I'm certainly enjoying enjoying that side of it. But um, now, I, for, for me, head, heading bush is, is is such a su such a, a stress relief and such a, a um, it's, it's just good for the soul. I, I, I can't I can't not do it. It's it's it's, it's driving me crazy. It really is. <laughs> but in the same note, we've we've, we've got to do the right thing. We've, we've got to all work together and hopefully get through it and, and, and get, get it over and done with. No, absolutely. I, I said people, they, um, all the four wheel drive chats and for us, gonna wait for us. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah so we're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be right. Oh, that's good. So, um, yeah, so I know you probably uh, six, seven years ago, I think we did a few trips in the past. Uh, yep. when you were driving a, uh, a, a, a Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, back in the day, I had a different, a different badge on the car. <coughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a Ute, isn't it? Like, it's a, yeah, it's a, yep. Yeah, it was a 1999 GU Patrol uh, 4.2 Trayback. Um, originally, it was a, a leaf sprung Ute. I got a coil conversion done through Sandy at Oswald Drive. Made the thing an absolute beast. It was twin lock, 35s, had pretty much everything on it that you'd sort of want in a four-wheel drive. To be truthful, I absolutely loved the car. It was it was fantastic. Um, we were talking about having a having a family back then as well. This is probably five years ago. So I said, alright, oh, we need a wagon for, for a four-wheel drive car then. I need some time to set it up. You can't just buy it and go four-wheel drive. You've got to spend some money on it. <laughs> so that's, that's sort of why I ended up selling the Ute and, and going for this one. I had the Ute for 11 years. You had that one. I had it, had it for a while, and it went from stock, stock as a rock to to what it ended up as. So it certainly, yeah. um, certainly, it went through a transformation. transformation. Yeah. So how did you get into four wheel driving? Like, was it was that you to your first four wheel drive or? Ah, uh, no. My first car was a VN Calais. <laughs> just, just, just full. No, nah, I'm not even going to talk about that. That's just, <laughs> that's just not. Nah. It was, it was the first car. It was cheap. Anyway, um, actually, my brother. My my brother, got, you know Barry, I think. Um, yeah, he got into full driving when he was 18, 19. So I was six, uh, well, I was four years younger than him. So I'd be 16 or, or 15 or so. And um, I, I ended up going out with him a fair bit. We we're, were always pretty close growing up, and we still are to this day. And he he got right into it, and obviously I wanted to follow my brother's footsteps, I guess, and and just sort of get in get into it. And I enjoyed it. it means we could go out together and spend more time together. Yep. And then obviously that evolved into um, nav run stuff. <coughs> yep. So we've done a fair bit of nav run stuff there with Rudy and Gary and and, and Hosey. Um and that sort of cemented the 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 love for for anything outdoors and sort of the adventure side of it, just doing something new, I guess. So that was sort of for the my part of it. And and so when when did you get your four wheel drive? Ah, like? uh, so I had so I had the VA in Calais from when I was. 17 to when I was about 18 and a half, and then I got a, a 105 series cruiser. 
That was my next one. Yeah, started off, started off life as a cruiser man. Um, and then I had that for 12 months and I needed a ute for work. So that's when I went out and got the GU ute to I think I was not, well, eight and a half, 19, somewhere there. Um, and I had the ute ever since until three years ago when I, when I bought this one. So I had it, had it for a while. It was, it was 11, 11 or 12 years, something I forget now. Yeah, there's a bit of no, isn't it? I mean, from the Nissan Ute coil spring, I mean, um, uh, live exo to the uh, to the wagon. Yep. Yeah, it was it was definitely an adjustment period on, on driving styles, that's for sure. The the Ute was very much just point and shoot, and it'll just get you up there. It, it's easy. This thing's got a, a couple more things that are a low slung, and just it's, it, it's, it's a different driving style. Yeah, yeah. Do you still have a lot of uh, video of uh, your Ute in the past? Uh, there's a couple out there. I, I think I've got about three or four videos of the Ute um, on, at, the, at the very start of the YouTube channel. I, I, I even made it. I had a bit of a teary when I sold the Ute. I'll admit. <laughs> so I had a. Um, I actually made a tribute video of of the Ute with all the all the best times I had in it. I think it's just like five or six minutes. It's just the highlight reels of of, of all the adventures it took me on. So I, I do miss the Ute. And little, little secret. Um, <laughs> I've already spoken to, to the missus. When Tobes is a little bit older and, and, he, and he wants to start doing some of the, the, the stupid hard stuff again and everything else, she's already given me permission to go out and get another GU to um, just the stock as a rock on, and we can do we can do it up together in the shed. We can do all the stuff ourselves, and we can go out there and break it and then bring it home and fix it again. This is a bit of a father son experiment. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, I think yeah. I went down the same path, like so. I mean, they, they start out. I mean, with a uh, fairly highly modified vehicle. I mean, the, all the hard tracks you can find, and then you sort of like gradually move to the more touring side. And then when you have family, like it is, you're missing or feel bad the whole day. Like, oh, let's <laughs> let's be what. Yeah. Let's go back to that. Yeah, exactly. Right. And while he's young, the, obviously just the jury and the camping side of it's going to be enough. You'll still come on full driving trips, but I think as he gets older, like, like me, you sort of you just sort of want to try and find that next hard track, and oh, we'll do that and. And I don't really want to go taking this one up, up stupid, stupid stuff. I'll take it up some, you've seen some videos, I'll, I'll take it up some, some pretty good tracks. But I also don't want to go damaging it just because of the, for the sake of damaging it. So I'll go out and get another GU and probably a Ute again. Yeah. <laughs> less less body work to dip. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. You don't want to take that, that truck that may be behind you to uh, some of the too hard, difficult, technical tracks. And... No, it's, it's more just the, the winter stuff. In summertime, pretty much any, point me at any track and I'll give it, I'll give it a bash. No, no dramas at all. Winter time, nah, you start sliding around a fair bit and that's that's when you start damaging panels and whatnot, I reckon. So. I guess, I mean, the, the only thing that like you probably a big difference, I mean, compared to the Tuna Series and the GU is the, uh, I mean, one's obviously being IFS. I mean, you sort of, at the back of your mind, always thinking, ah, oh, is it gonna, I mean, damage the seaweed and things like that. <laughs> yep, yeah, exactly right. Ooh, I, I purposely haven't gone for 35s on this for exactly that reason. I've, I'm, try, I'm trying to, I've got the adage of if I can't drive it on 33s, I shouldn't be there on 35s. Like it's, for me, it's just a, it's an added added challenge to, to, the, to the thing. I, I, can go, I can fit 35s on this thing easy as, but then it sort of, it, for me, it just takes the challenge away from it and you just start looking for harder and harder stuff and then all of a sudden you're just gonna break it quicker. So I'm, I'm touch wood. Thankful I've never managed to break anything too severe on it yet. Um, but I, I know it's gonna happen one day. I've, I've spoken to a couple of guys that we go out all the time with and it's it's a foregone conclusion. I'm, I'm going to break it eventually. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I like what you're saying. Like, um, I mean, sometimes you don't just want to chase. I mean, bigger tires. I mean, chase yeah. for the harder check, right? Like, because I always say to people, I mean, uh, sooner or later you're gonna find ninety nine percent of the checks are easy, and then yeah. sometimes when you have to put like I don't know crazy forty inch tires and, and things like yeah. that, and I think I think you really lose that, start losing that and uh, and excitement and enjoyment of it. Yep, exactly right. Yeah, and so, so obviously a lot of my followers know that I've, I go wheeling with a lot of sixty twos all the time, and and they sort of chuck thirty fives, and, and a few of them now are doing thirty sevens and thirty eights on on their car, which is phenomenal. The fact that they can fit them, awesome, love it. But but they they're the ones that are getting to the top of the track, going, oh that was easy as, let's find something harder. And I've just had a I've just had a ball on the last track because I've been scrambling and, and having a bit of a bit of a fun time trying to get up of it, and they're just going, oh. But but it was easy. I'm like that's because I'm on 32s and you're on 37s. Like go back to 32s and see what happens. It'll be just, you don't have to find the hardest track to make it fun. Yeah, 
Yeah. So that's my adage on anyway. I'm 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 a, I'm a little bit different to most. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's really uh, it, it makes sense. I I think uh, uh, certainly yeah. Uh, because uh, a lot of people don't know that like once you put a bigger tires, you lose that torque as well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, unless you start maybe like, changing the low, low speed in in low range as well. Like that crawl that crawl gear just isn't there anymore. You'll be great because even uh, if you future in the future you can compare. I, I, I don't know whether you have a video that compare a bigger tire compared to a smaller tire. Is it bigger the better? Uh, <laughs> D depends on the be... depends on the situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it'd be great to see a video from you like uh, do that sort of like comparison. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, something something to think about. <laughs> hey, so when um, I guess I mean when you probably start filming a couple of years ago, like how? How did you come up with the idea? And uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, filming is not easy. Like, I mean, to film is easy, but to have a good video, like, take a lot of effort and experience, I mean, to get to where you are today. Um, so, tell us about, like, um, who inspired you to, to start filming, or is it something that you've been thinking or enjoying in the past? Uh, so, it all sort of started because we, um, me and Barry have been doing trips for years. Like, so, I think we went to Tasmania probably. She's we been about seven years ago now, six or seven years ago, went to Tassie um, for, for a nav run. And we, we sort of just had GoPros and just banged them on the car and just filmed a couple of things here or there. Now, we weren't dedicated to trying to film. It was just a, we had a GoPro, so let's just film some stuff. Um, got back and I had no idea how to edit. So Barry was actually doing most of the editing side of stuff back then yeah. for that. And he just banged, he just literally just dragged all the footage, put it into one box and, and said, there, there's the video. I'm like, well, that's just, that's just the footage of you, you, that we've collected. You haven't edited it, you've chucked it together. Um, which was, was all good. It sort of re helped relive the trip, which was, which was great. Um, not long after that, I'd done a Fraser trip with a, with a bunch of mates. And that one, I, I decided, no, I actually want to try and, try and film this properly. We'll just sort of try and mem memorialize it a bit better. So actually had a proper camera and more GoPros and just just tried to put a little bit more effort in it. Most of it was done on my phone back then as well. Um, yep. got, got back and it took me, oh geez, it would have been three months to edit this one 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 video, which was about 20 minutes long. Now I can edit a 20 minute video in like an hour and a half. It's, it's pretty quick now. Um, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great video. I think, I, I lie, that video's probably got about 100,000 views on it now. Um, but it sort of, it, it wasn't, it didn't have any fancy effects in it or anything else. It was just cutting scenes together, putting a bit of music to it. But we, I actually had a movie night here with the people who came on the trip. And we sat down, I put it on the, on the big TV inside, and we watched it all. And it was it was bloody phenomenal. I love sort of reliving that, that adventure with, with the people we were there with. It was a nice memory. We even burned it onto a DVD for them and gave, it all, gave everyone a copy. It was just a, a cool experience to, to do. I thought it was a nice, nice finish to the trip. And that sort of, I think, sort of sparked the passion for for memorial memorialising the the adventures and sort of sharing what we do with, with the with the broader community. So I, obviously, I uploaded that to YouTube as well, and it sort of got got a bit of traction. And I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of fun. I like doing this. And and then I sort of d done a few more, and then I started to get a few extra cameras, and it was just it just grew into this this passion of what I wanted to do. And it just it's part of it is obviously the sharing the experience and, and, and sort of that, that aspect of it. Another part of it is, is I'm a giant geek in, at heart and I love the, the, the camera side of it as in just, just learning how to use a new camera and the features of it and the different lenses and, and just sort of the, the fun part of how the, how the, how the hardware works. Um, the editing side of it is, it, it's creative. So obviously I'm a, a cabinet maker so we do a lot of the designs for kitchens and whatnot. Um, but kitchens, there's only so much design you can do there. So I've got this creativeness that I wanted to try and get out somewhere, and that happened to be a nice little outlet for me to make it work. So I was pretty happy about that I could sort of get all, all of these little little things to work in, in one little venture, and it it just worked. And then, yeah, just hope. Oh. No, it's great. It's great. I, I really enjoy your video. Like, I remember when you started this channel a couple of years ago. Uh, obviously, like, like many other stuff like full giant video on YouTube, like stuff like you can see as an amateur and yeah. kind of, you know, like you know, there's no editing whatsoever. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it builds. <laughs> yeah, eventually you see the improvement and uh, become a lot more professional. Like, uh, if you look at your recent video, it's just uh, yeah, it's incredible. Like, uh, really, 
good job, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's part of it. Part of it is that hardware side as well. Just getting some better gear. Get, um, makes it look a little bit better as well, like different filters on lenses and sort of learning how to do lighting properly and yep. everything else. And I just realized that I forgot to do another light here, so there's no fill light. <laughs> it's just little little tricks that you learn over time, and but it is what it is, and it's yeah, I, I, I love nearly every aspect of it. I reckon it's fantastic. So, and even collaborating with, with other um, other channels and other, other people, um, yep. it, it's handy if you've got more people on cameras to run, run around and get more footage. And then obviously you can share share the footage between everyone, and you get dis different different aspects yep. of the entire entire thing, which is phenomenal. So, and plus the people you get to meet along the, along the way as well. Yeah, I agree. And I think uh, I've already mentioned this in my last interview. I think one of the hardest part, like when you try to do filming, is that like a lot of time you cannot film your own cut. Like, yeah. Yeah, and I mean you, you start driving to the front, and then you start filming everybody come up this track, and then yep. have a minute. Yes. Yeah, exactly right. You think I'd be fitter running up and down all the hills all the time? I think I just like too many drinks and too many too many snacks at, at around dinner time. <laughs> uh, and, and what is the hardest part for the filming? Like, do you think it would be the editing or uh, choosing the the angles and like what what is the hardest part? Uh, for you? Um, sometimes trying to find a story behind it. For me, I'm, I'm, I'm more than just trying to find, just trying to record something and put it up. I'm, I'm not purely about just just give you a picture and, and that's it. I, I always try and have a story behind the entire, it might be a very loose story of we, we went on a trip. Like it's, it can be as basic as that sometimes, but other times it might, it might be like a, a story of how we're trying to get from A to B and, and, and all the trials and tribulations in between. I, I always try and make a, a bit of something out of it, for, especially for the trip videos. Um, some of the review stuff, which obviously everyone sort of knows my shed these days because that's all I can film at the moment in um, in, in ISO. But sort of trying to get uh, from, from point A to point B rather than just, just so show an image. So for me, it's trying to find that storyline is is the hardest part sometimes. I, I don't. The filming side of it is physically hard because you're running up and down hills all the time and you're on your feet for 10 hours a day trying to trying to get the right angle and, oh, can we, can we hold on a second? And, it can take ages to film a good trip. The editing side of it, I don't mind because you just you just sit there and you're just reliving the trip again, and it's awesome. Like that's the for me, that's the fun part. I actually quite like the um, the editing. I've said a couple of times to a couple of other people, I'd, I'd be quite happy if I could almost just go, go film and edit, and not necessarily have to worry about me being in the video or my car or anything else. Almost like a like a business style of just I'm I'm here to film your trip. And I, I've toyed with that, that idea as a business model, sort of in the past of, of something to do. Like, oh, for, for X amount of dollars, I'll come away with you. I'll film your entire trip as your trip, whether it be for your own YouTube channel or just for your own personal use. And just, so that way I get the benefit of, of using all the gear and having fun while I'm out there, doing the fun part of the editing, but ne not necessarily any of the responsibility of, of me being on camera. <laughs> Which I don't mind, but... Yeah, I you know. Say, uh, yeah, good, good, uh, good to hear that. Like, I think uh, I definitely agree that. Like, I think having a um, uh, a story behind each uh, yep. video. Yep. Uh, I like it similar to phot photographer. Like, I think photography. I think what makes good photographer is the story behind. Like, everybody can take really amazing shot um, using their phone at the moment. But what is really important to differentiate? I mean, photographer into a. I mean, normal people taking photos is really the story behind. I think uh, you pretty much nailed that. Like, I think every video you create has a uh, sort of like, in the, I think you, you still have to keep that entertainment side as well. Yep. Like, ultimately, I mean, you're not recording as a diary, like, right? Yep. You know, you're entertaining the audience. And I think uh, you certainly achieved that. Some of your videos is just like cramming up. Like, like, <laughs> one of the recent videos which I watch, uh, and I think I will mention that later on. <laughs> I think I know which one. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, a couple of other things I, mean, I want to ask you, like, it's just a like, uh, general question. So, um, when you drive past other four wheel drive, do you wave to them? If, if they're looking at me? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not randomly driving down the road like, hi everyone! <laughs> like, I'm, not, like, I'm not that kind of weird, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, like, if someone see, sees me and one's in the window, oh, hey, hey, go, I'm cool, I'll, I'll have a quick chat and do whatever, and 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to talk to anyone and say, I don't know how many times, this sounds really up myself and I hate saying it, I don't know how many times in the bush I've been, I've been coming out of a track and there's a convoy coming the other way and every car stops at my window, hey Steve, I love your YouTube channel man, it's great. <laughs> and and I, truth be told, I love it, my head goes, like, I can't even get my head out the window after it. Um, <laughs> it is a little bit embarrassing every now and then, but it's, it's kind of cool that, to know that sort of, um, uh, not, uh, I, hate, I hate using the word influencer, but um, I, I, I've got a bit of a following in the four wheel driving community, which, which I like, and I've got, I've got a bit of, uh, I'm n known for, for being a four wheel driver, which I like, so, yeah, I can't, I can't say that. <laughs> In, in the ute, yeah. <laughs> so there was probably two times in the ute. One was um, we're actually just at sheepyards, and we we're just doing a, a run up to the run up to the highway to find some some firewood. And it was with my brother, another mate, and it was just a, a nothing nothing event. It was just a let's go get some firewood. We're just going to burn up there. I think I still had full pressures in the tires, um, same with thirty fives, everything else. And there was just this. We're just going along the main the main track, and there was this little offshoot on the, on the side there. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, whatever, it's just, didn't even think about it, just build on up there. And before I know it, I mean, what, third year high range, just full noise, trying to send it up this hill. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going backwards, <laughs> what's going wrong here? And, and I've come back, and the side of the car is just slammed against a tree. And I'm thinking, oh, no, what have I done? Um, and it took us probably about three hours to get ourselves out of that that situation without completely stoving in the entire side of the car, just with yep. winches and everything else. And it was just one of those "what the hell have I just done?" moments. And it was just it was just this spare of the moment, just bad decision that just happened. And the second one was um, uh, where were we? I think we were in Tellerook area, and there was just this just this little bog hole. Well, I thought it was a little bug hole, and my brother, my brother's just gone. Oh, just, just go through there. I'm like, yeah, right, sure thing. Just, just power on through it. Got halfway through, and I just, I've just sunk, absolutely, just boom, down, down to the bones. I had a, um, a mate's GoPro on the bonnet of the car as well. That washed off. It was that, it was that deep. Well, it was above my bonnet, and I'm stuck there. I'm like, oh no. So I'm thinking, oh, I'm on the UA. Just get me out, get me out, quick, quick, quick. And I'm sitting and watching water just pour into the car. My mates just come along and just strip like mostly naked just the end of his jocks, jumped into the water and I'm like, oh cool, you're gonna hook up the strap. He spends ten minutes trying to find his GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I got I got water up to nearly the nearly the bloody um the, the window winders in the car and I'm sitting there going, Oh my car's ruined. Luckily it was a it was a DX model um thing I had vinyl everywhere. Yeah, exactly right. Pulled it out. I ended up doing a turbo on that on that one as well. Uh, water, water um, I think, because it was so hot, and it's just hit it. It's just done the bearings inside the turbo. So, an excuse to upgrade the turbo anyway. So that worked well for me. <laughs> and um, anyway, got out, got out of that, and oh, it took me about a month to clean the car properly. Just took all the vinyl off and re redone everything. It was a nightmare to do. I fixed it, but just one of those. What the hell, you? What, oh, which is where my hate of mud comes from now. Because that was that was a traumatic experience, <laughs> and this thing's got carpet, so it'll be even worse. Oh uh, no! So hey, actually, uh, I want to ask you, hey, your weather, um, what does it stand for? Sorry. What your your weather? C R A. Oh, 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 oh uh, so, so create mud. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which this thing doesn't really create much mud, <laughs> and it hates dust because it's a Toyota airbox, so you know. <laughs> Any, any other mods? It's it's pretty well set up the way I like it. I've, I've, I've I, I said to Leanne with this car, I've, I'm not going to try and shortchange it, and because poor man pays twice is what they say. I didn't want to just put in cheap and nasty stuff and then have to redo it in three years time because it's because it's no good. I'm pretty happy with it overall. I've, obviously, it's got ARB front and rear lockers, Resla side steps, Resla rear bar. The ARB front bar came on the car when I had it. Um, it's it's okay. I'm not a massive fan of the ARB front bar, but it, it's okay. Um, winch is pretty good. Li the lithium battery, which I just put a video video out this morning for that one. The lithium is probably my favourite mod of the entire entire car because it just it gives me the ability to run anything and everything. 
Um, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of changing over the drawers because they're just the, the King's drawers on the back, which to be honest are pretty good for the price. I'm actually pretty happy with them overall. But I'm thinking I just want to do a bit of a custom setup where may, maybe I'm half considering going away from the drop slide and having the fridge down lower and then maybe stacking some drawers. I'm not sure yet. I'm sort of I'm torn with the idea and I'm, I'm thinking about making a video series about how to make drawers as well. Being a cabinet maker, that's pretty easy for me. So sort of have, have a detailed uh, layout of how, like how, to, like how to measure them up, how to set the cutting list out, how to, how, to, how to cut them, how to build them, how to carpet them, how to do all the, all the details of it. But um, in the same note, it's sort of a lot of effort. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's no five minute job, that one. That's a couple of days. <laughs> Uh, lately, I'd probably say Rocky Track, mainly because it's only 20 minutes down the road. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, because like, you just say pretty much only links to the extent of the, uh, the highway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm sort of right up there uh, near, near Yarra Glen. Well, I'm in Moorabah, but so, so it's only like 20, 25 minutes down the, down the road for me to get to it. So it's nice and quick. You're, you're in Talangi, Rocky, and it's sort of one of those tracks that you can drive it one week and it'll be easy as you go back there the next week and you and you're winching the entire thing almost like it's it changes from week to week just like that um yeah. favorite area would probably actually be more in uh Wanangata, talbotville sort of area but well, there's not super hard tracks out there but just that that whole area is phenomenal i'd, I'd go there any day of the week i absolutely love it <laughs> and what is the hardest track you've ever been oh in this car or all together both like, like in, how about in the 200 series? Oh, in the 200. Gee whiz. Um, <laughs> oh, I can't think of that. Uh, I wouldn't put Rocky down as a hard track. I'd say Rock, Rocky track's just a... It's oh, it's one of those tracks you, you, you've either got grip or you don't because it's all rock. Like, it's not it's not that hard. Oh, I can't even think really. Maybe the... Maybe the steps in Salangi as well, just sort of off or Devil Staircase off to the off past past Rocky Track. There, yeah, that was a bit, that was a bit of fun. Mainly because you're off camber and sort of, if you didn't pick the right line, it could have gone wrong. I drove it relatively easy, but it sort of it had that element of of, of risk there. I guess I can't say I've done any super stupid where I thought I was gonna break the car straight off. Of, I'm, I'm the first, and people who go away with me a bit sort of know this, I'm the first to go, if, if I'm not feeling confident about something, I'm not I'm not there to pr prove how big my old fella is, it's just, no, nah, not feeling that today, don't don't want to do it, I'm not here to break my stuff or, or try and do anything stupid, if I, if I think I'm capable of it, cool, I'll give it a crack, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not that, I'm not, I'm not one to be led by other people, <laughs> so if you want to do it, go nuts, I'll film you, great, but I don't necessarily want to break my stuff doing it either, so. Yeah, I think you always good to have a mindset like fight another day. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, it some, sometimes doesn't make the best content for my for, for YouTube, but it's still my daily driver as well. I got I got to drive to work on Monday, so I will pro probably say hard, hardest one I've done in the Ute would be maybe Elkhorns. Elkhorn, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was pretty tough. Um, done Alice a couple of times in it. That wasn't too bad. Um, yeah. We looked at sunset and stuff, and <laughs> nope. <laughs> say it's, um, it's a cool mess of chat now. Yeah, yeah. Unless you unless you got a, a comp truck, don't even try it. <laughs> it's nasty, nasty that one. Yeah. And uh, so, do you have any uh, big plan for your channel? Uh, I did until COVID came on. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it was going to be a um, because I, I was I'm sort of getting pretty close to 20,000 20, subscribers on there, which I'm pretty excited about. I think I've got another four thousand to go, which. Hopefully by November-ish, I should should be there. Um, I was going to do a big giveaway of um, of what I was talking about before about how I can come and fil film your event. Yeah, it was yeah. it was going to be a, exactly that, like uh, whatever whatever how we're going to enter or not. But just the prize was, was going to be I'll come to wherever you are in it, within Australia, wherever that be. So even if I have to fly to WA, but my my cost, um, I'll, I'll come over there, fil film whatever you want, whatever, whatever you want to do, and then go from there. It was just it was partly for me to get out of the house and, and do something cool, but I don't think uh, I don't think anyone's going to be flying the WA for the next two years. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be a while before we can. Yeah, exactly right. I have been talking to a couple of sponsors though, because obviously I've got a couple of sponsors that I, that I work with, like with Unitip and Bush Barrier, and that's about it really. And only the two sort of work with really well. Um, we've been talking to them about maybe getting some stuff together. 
to, to give away to, to some to some subscribers and, and whatnot, try and just give something back to the to the community that sort of done done so much for me. So I'm pretty happy there. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Hey, uh, so do you have any advice to uh, new four wheel drive folks? Like, so a lot of I mean, I think the last couple of years you will realize that I mean, a lot of uh, people, I mean, uh, just new to four wheel driving, and uh, a lot of them like to spend two hundred thousand dollars on the vehicle. Um, and uh, yeah, so what is your advice to the people who are new to four wheel driving? Like, probably, probably two two parts to it. So one would be yeah. use your car stick stock standard before before yeah. you go modifying. Um, and then, and as you modify it, do one thing at a time and use each, of it, each individual thing as you modify it. So that way you can learn what that modification has done for you. So, so you can put a rear locker in, go use it, see what the rear locker does. And, and you just get an idea of what that particular item does. Put a lift kit in it, put some tires in it, just, and realize what individual thing does for you and what benefits, benefits you the most from it. But I mean, you're gonna go, go the whole hog, go the whole hog, but probably still do it slowly so you can learn what each individual thing does for you and how to use it properly. But there's a, there's a knack to being able to use lockers properly without sort of putting in more crap than what they're worth because they, they can push you off and they can pull you around and do some all sorts of funny things to the car if you don't know how to how to use them properly or how to drive with them properly. Um, and secondly, don't be led by other people. Um, if you're going out with other people who are vastly more experienced and they want to do hard tracks, awesome, let them go do it. But realise your experience and your capabilities might not be anywhere near what they are, um, and try and find someone who's who's willing to accept that and sort of help help guide you rather than sort of egg you on through through something that that's not really within your or your car's capability because that can lead to not wanting to go go away ever again. <laughs> no, I totally agree. I think very good uh, good advice. I, I definitely agree that. Like, I think. Uh, really had to get to know your vehicle before um, before you upgrade yeah. any and uh, parts and, and accessory. Like right? I think being able to really understand how your vehicle behaves uh, on a particular track or condition, uh, and, and yeah, that that super super important. And and again, I also agree like what you say. Like I think um, don't get led by some of the people who say, hey, soon come on, like it's not too hard, give it a go. Like you know, um, yeah. it's just that. that Peer pressure is sometimes it's very difficult in yeah. the situation. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think awesome, awesome. Hey, um, the last part of the interview, there's a couple of questions that I got from. The, uh, I'm nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> well, some some of the questions you already already expected. Like, um, well, this this question I got bombarded by so many people. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, just a little bit, basically, when do you, will you buy a real four-wheel drive, such as Nissan? <laughs> <laughs> well, partly answered that before, so I'm looking at, probably looking at another GU down the track. Um, yeah. Truth be told, and a lot of, a lot of, because a lot of my followers are 62 owners as well, because I, for some reason I make 62s look really good in my videos. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Depending on what the next the 300 series is and how that and what configuration that comes out in motor wise suspension wise depending on what that is is going to maybe push me towards a 62 rather than yeah. rather than going to a 300 depending on what what it comes out because there's so many there's so much speculation like there's no va it's going to be this it's going to be until it comes out i don't know no idea at, at the moment I, i've already got a rule of i always keep my cars for about 10 years minimum because you i'm putting what Fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of investment of of gear into the car. Like, there's a lot of money spent on these cars. I'm, I'm not going to change it over every three years. That's just it's, yeah. too much, it's too much money. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Cool, awesome. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a tricky question for you. How much are you making from your channel? <laughs> <laughs> no, Actually, I'm, 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 I'm open to it. Um, so on average, um, yeah. I, I get about five hundred dollars a month. Yeah, right. from from the actual channel so from AdSense from so from people who watch the videos those, those ads that pop up I don't put them on there YouTube does it um, so from those ads that come up it's, it's some months are like $200 I've, I've had a, the odd month it's like seven eight hundred dollars but on average it's about five hundred dollars a month that I'll get out of it which to be honest doesn't even cover one trip worth, worth, worth of fuel and food and everything else so I'm still by far down 
and I've got a hell of a lot of camera equipment and that, all that stuff costs money to be able to produce the content. So I'm by far not making money out of it, <laughs> that's for sure. Or just, just my editing software. To have my editing software is a yearly subscription and that's um, $1,100 a year just to have it. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, that, that's awesome. I think, I, think uh, I, I know similar, uh, quite a few YouTube uh, channels um, with similar audience size. Like, yeah. yeah, similar to what they're making from, from YouTube. Uh, I think it also depends on the, the content as well, because you know, some of the clip, some of the, uh, the video you probably make more than a few others even. Yeah, so it, it comes down to the actual content because some, some advertisers can pick your video and go, hey, hey that's really relevant to my product. I'm going to sponsor that video to and, and put money towards it to show it more, which means I get more out of it because obviously it's pushing it more. But it all goes off views. I think it's, I think on average it works out to be about oh, what was it? It was um uh, I think it's about a cent per per hundred views or something. So yeah, that, uh, so yeah. one one cent per hundred views. I, I think it's how it works out. Like it's it's not a lot, but when you get twenty thousand views, sort of, and that's sort of per day and everything else and it's just sort of you, you go so obviously the more views you get across the entire channel because every video will be monetized it sort of just grows i think on, on average it's somewhere between 20 and uh between 12 and 30 dollars a day sort of that that it might get across the entire channel from all the videos and obviously if you get if you get a really good video that gets a spike of well, today's video is actually going pretty well i think it's already up to like 800 views in in two hours or something um, so that's going really well for me. So hopefully that sort of gets up to 10, 20, 30,000 views in the next in the next two weeks, and that, and that might be a, that might be a sixty sixty dollar video just in the first week. So you, you know you never know. See what happens. Well, I think uh, it wasn't the, the video you just posted up this morning. The, the guests. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think the timing is can be quite important as well, isn't it? Hundred percent. I've always. I've always I've tried mucking around with timings on videos before, yeah. and I've always found that my my, my four o'clock Wednesday slot has always proved me pretty well. Yeah. Um, but I think because I backed off the content for for a bit there because Tobes came along and work was busy and just COVID and everything else was just a bit funny. Because I was, I was probably only doing a video every three weeks, and sort of getting a bit 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 lax. I think I've sort of I think YouTube's going oh hold on this channel's sort of dying a bit. We're just going to put it to the side. That's partly why I've upped the content a bit to try and. Get, get that that growth happening again, and it seems it seems to be working well. I mean, I'm, I'm trying a couple of different time slots. I think I done Friday last week, and that video is going alright. Um, Sunday morning today, um, and that's going really well so far. And I think with especially people in Victoria, obviously um, COVID people are staying at home. Sunday morning, sitting there with a coffee and watch, watch a bit of YouTube. I know Tyler Thompson, he's one I watch every Sunday morning. He, he's fantastic, so um, I don't know, maybe I can pinch some of his viewers. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I, I, pretty smart. I mean, you, you try to put some time and see what works. What yeah. And, and I, I think I saw your video this morning when I opened up my, my Instagram to the first thing. Hello, man. It's a new video. It's time, it's such an early morning. Yeah, it's something, something different. Give it a go, why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any other expressions? Um, have you ever kissed? Your cruiser. <laughs> um, do you want me to now? <laughs> I, I guess I know I've kissed the you. I've definitely kissed the you. The bonnet. No, the bonnet. Yeah, the bonnet. <laughs> Mainly because I think I was shit scared coming out of something and I just got out and I'm like, oh my god. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that worked really well. I, I don't know. I, I, I do get attached to my cars. I, I, I like them. They're, they're part of the family almost. So they, they, they take on all these adventures and trips. You, you kind of they, they kind of grow on you. <laughs> I think Le, Leanne's cried at every car we've ever sold. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's good. And uh, all right, that's probably almost uh, the end of the interview. One more question. This is actually coming from your my uh, Dave. Hey Wes, yep. from, uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> he, uh, he asked you if you can do a uh, water test on your 200 series. <laughs> <laughs> Set it holds water? <laughs> I can guarantee you it doesn't hold water because I've been through a couple of deep river crossings and it definitely comes inside. <laughs> 
So, yeah, cool, awesome. And I thank you so much uh, for your time. And uh, yes, it's been great to uh, talk to you, get to know a lot more about yourself. And uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing more of your video coming out in the next couple of weeks. Yes. And, uh, yeah, we definitely need to do a trip together. Oh, 100%. Um, I've been hanging for ages. I've, I've said, to, said to the wife, I've said, as soon as all this, this stuff's over and we're allowed to go camping again, I don't care if it's midweek or whatever, I'm, I'm gone. I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Clear all the cobweb. Yeah. <laughs> thing hasn't been driven in like three weeks. It's just sitting here. Oh, no, we should take it to a uh, supermarket. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to the shops. Leanne's going to the shops because she figured, I don't know, we'll just one of us will go and she, she knows what she wants to buy. So I'm, I'll just stay home with Toad and do whatever. Plus, I've got the, the work van as well. So I'm driving the work van around. Apparently, as a trade, I'm still allowed into Bunnings. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, awesome. It's awesome. Oh, man, thank you so much, and uh, you take care, and uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing the video coming out. Awesome, thanks, buddy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, and subscribe to uh, Australian 4x4 Venture. Awesome, thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Peace.